Well, hello, friends. Today I'm going to talk about Eternals Thanos Rises. And I, I clearly bought the action figure variant. I saw another action figure variant where it had the, the back of the card on the back cover. And uh, this one doesn't. And, and that makes me disappointed. And I bought a few of these action figure variants. Now I want to go check to see if they have the back covers on them. Um, and then, of course, I used a variant cover as the thumbnail for this. So I didn't even use the real cover at all. Uh, Del Mundo cover. This is uh, from writer Kieran Gillen and artist Dustin Weaver. Color artist is Matthew Wilson and uh, Clayton Cowles on, on uh, letters, letter and designer too. So Matthew Wilson doing colors. And this book is, uh, I don't imagine it could be selling any better than Eternals. Uh, but it really is for more the general Marvel fan, considering how important Thanos is. And that's interesting because Thanos is barely in it and all the Eternals are in it. Uh, but um, uh, essentially, it's a, an, a review of his origin, uh, which uh, once I finished it was extremely interesting, and especially the way uh, the comic ended. Not on a cliffhanger, just on a, a philosophical note, um, or a, a perhaps future story note, and uh, that I really, really enjoyed this. And this is probably the better introduction, <coughs> excuse me, the better introduction to that Eternals um, series. Uh, and And... And I say that also thinking that, okay, even though I like the Eternal series, it was more in the context of, okay, I read everything from Kieran Gillen. Uh, I would definitely not recommend that as an intro to Kieran Gillen uh, or anything of that sort. Uh, it did run a little slow. I don't know that the art matched. I love Del Mundo, but sometimes that lifelessness, you know, is better. I shouldn't call it lifelessness. Sometimes that painterly style takes a while to grab hold. Uh, and therefore it's better with uh, something that's going to go longer running, say something like Die, it took a while. Uh, even though I like the art, it took a while to really feel, you know, have it personally attached to the storyline. Uh, and the same thing with something like Del Mundo, I think it's better with a, uh, a little bit more popular characters like Cable. He did Cable, and I think that aligns a little bit better, and Cable's probably the, the bottom of popularity. You know, when he did Thor... Uh, towards the end of Jason Aaron's Thor run. That was also pretty good. Not very talked about, but I enjoyed it. Uh, his Eternals stuff, it's not bad. It just, you know, made the story a little bit harder to attach to for me. So in this case, uh, Dustin Weaver is on the art, and uh, I actually enjoy the art um, a little bit better. This is a great splash page in there. And, um, and Matthew Wilson, of course, is not... I think one of the benefits of Matthew Wilson and why sometimes I don't often like him is that he doesn't have one style of coloring. He seems like he can switch it up a little bit, change things uh, around. Where some of my other colorists that maybe I would rank ahead of, of Matthew Wilson, you, they have a, it feels like they just, um, you know, spin off of two or three uh, palettes. Um, so, hey, this is deep in Eternals lore, and I get it. I'm either new, newer or as new as you to this, to be honest. The only Eternals I had read before this was called The, the Eternal, and it was a, a Max book uh, that I forget who wrote now. Someone's sort of famous. And, um, and that was great. So I haven't even read, really, Kieran Gillen's run. I have a copy from two decades ago that I did read two decades ago, but I don't know anything about it or remember it at all. Um... But where this uh, comes together is that it, 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 it handles the narration and the history and then the action and also like the political intrigue between them. It balances really well for a 22 page comic. Um, and then towards the end, it starts really coming together, really getting enjoyable. Uh, we learn about Thanos' parents and, uh, and I have no idea where this adds color to that or if it's a review of his, of his origin or his parents' origin or exactly what it is, to be honest. Um, but all I know is that as a one-shot, it's very enjoyable and definitely worth reading on uh, on on uh, Marvel Comics Unlimited if you didn't pick it up or if you're not sure. So it's not one of them that you should just skip by. I think it's actually a good read if you're just a general Marvel Comics fan. Like just, you know, Thanos is an important villain in that and I think that's a, uh, a this is a big enough deal to read that his pre-origin, we should say, uh, um, in, in a more modern context. So, uh, very enjoyable and, uh, probably my favorite of Kieran Gillen's Eternal run so far. Anyway, let me know what you thought of it. Let me know what you thought about Eternals in general, because, uh, even though I liked it, I, I am, um, I am more open to the people that didn't so much. I don't like so much the excuse that, you know, I'm not attached to the Eternals or whatever. 
Because none of us really are unless you're a big, if you're an older Kirby guy, then you are, right? And then in, the, this, in that case, these are probably not your eternal sort of attitude. Um, but I am curious to like, you know, throw ideas back and forth on, on Kieran Gillen's Eternals. Um, and it's more than a team book because there's hundreds of them, right? So a team book's hard enough to get to know characters in a six issue span. But with the Eternals, there's a lot of them. So anyway, let me know what you guys thought. And uh, if you guys read this down in the comments, I'll talk to you guys later.